Well, there we go. That's what we're going to do. It is the technology show where we translate geek into regular speak. He hasn't forgot the spiel. Hello, Mr. Sternberg. Hello. Good to have you back. Well, there. Yeah. Online. Stop. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, great. it's great to be here in this whole situation is uh, something I think the world has now experienced. And we are back in the middle of it. Week three. We are. It's uh, well. Today's going to be an interesting show. So it's always cool having you sitting in the coach, eh? albeit fourteen kilometers away, wherever you might be. Uh, we have a guest, um, so there's a cool segment coming up uh, towards the end of the show. But in uh, the spirit of things, uh, as they say, let's get uh, straight into it. So we're going to go with uh, things with a Z. Nice. I love saying Z. That's something that still comes from our days of when we first started this show, the Americanism. So things with a Z and what did I find this week? So it's actually an app. I didn't do hardware because the guest of the week is going to be hardware and actually they have an app as well. And I have to say, cause it's not like me to feature an app when I haven't played with it, but this was just so cool and I had to share it. And if I can find some Lego, then I will play with it. It's called brick it. Now yeah. the way it works is, well, I don't know. Do you have Lego? Are you, do you play with Lego? Or did you play with Lego when you were a massive, kid? massive Lego fan when I was a young one myself? So the problem with Lego um, is that when you buy the kits, right? I've lost my mouse. I'm working on three screens and I've lost my mouse. There it is. Um, when you buy the kit, it comes in the box with little instructions and you build it once and you break it down and then your Lego kind of just like becomes part of the collection like that picture yeah. there that you can see there's just this pile of lego it either is designed to fall under barefoot parents feet while they're walking or um it's are we coughing sneezing or what we're doing um so the idea behind bricket as you can see in the in the screenshot in fact i can click on and i've made another one so you scan, well, let's go back, right? So you scan your pile of Lego, so it's using AR, and more specifically, it's using LiDAR, because this is only on iOS at the moment. So of it scans course. your pile, and you can see all the little bits and pieces that it's identified, <laughs> and then it makes suggestions. So it says, well, we can see you've got these little pieces. What about building that? Because that's what you could build with what you've got. And ultimately, you can build that, which... I think it's pretty freaking awesome. That is so cool. Like that is, this that is, is every kid should have this. Well, every kid will be able to, but I mean, like there it is. It comes up with a step-by-step, -step, how many pieces you need. So it's exactly like building Lego with an instruction, but now you're getting create these wonderful things. Now, what will be interesting, I don't know if you've watched the show Lego Masters and for some people across the world, they might not have seen it. I love that show. Um, I really love that show. I'm not creative enough to ever be on the show like that, but I absolutely love that show. And what would be amazingly cool is if you could take some of the stuff that those people built, right, and if they remapped it into this app, and then you could scan all the bricks that you have at home to see if you could actually build those things. Even better, the e-commerce side of things that I'm thinking of now, is if you're missing the pieces, you'd be able to buy the pieces. Just go, so maybe the app does it. I don't know, I don't have it, so I I, I haven't downloaded purely because I don't have any Lego to play with. Because you've, um, you've seen you've seen that some of the places now, like if you go to Lego store, you can actually buy the bricks and you can get, you know, like the candy store, you know, you can get the piecemeal and get piece by piece. And that's totally new. Like when we were kids, you buy the set and that's correct. it. Correct. So. I think they've had to do that. Like it makes more sense. It also, it helps with the creativity. Lego has been quite in the forefront as well when it comes to augmented reality. I mean, they've brought out a few sets that you can augment and bring to life. So when I stumbled across this, I, you know, I just thought this was like very cool. Um, I'm gonna have to go past one of my nieces or nephew's house and just steal, sorry, borrow some Lego. Um, 
and then I'll download the app and give it a whirl. But for anyone that has an iOS device, uh, Brick It, so Brick IT app, um, yeah, give it a whirl. In fact, uh, share some comments with us and let us know how you how you go with that. So that's my things with a Z. Purely, as I said, I'm, I'm saving the gadget side for later on in our, in our show today. Um, what else have we got here? Business tech news. Now, I have to start off with Apple. Um, it wouldn't be a normal show if I didn't have something to do with Apple. And don't worry, I've got other brands out there as well. But finally, we are going to get rid of this ugly thing. So for anyone that doesn't realize, the App Store or iTunes card, the picture that I've got up on my screen, is now going to morph into the Apple gift card. In Australia, we are finally able to now get this. Now, why is this a big deal? Let me explain it to you. Up until now, till this thing launched, and I know you don't have an iOS device, well, not you, but someone in your family who is Kevin does have an iOS device. Um, to get an app, you have to buy an iTunes card. Uh, you can use it in the App Store on your phone, and you can use it on the Mac App Store on your MacBook. And that's all the only places you can use it. Then if you wanted to get music, you had to get the iTunes card. And now you can, they actually, if you go back and have a look, um, it was kind of one app store in iTunes. That was progress for Apple. Took them many years to get there, but that was progress. And this is because of licensing and all the other things. But Apple themselves sell an incredible amount of products, as you know, and third-party products, which you can buy online. You could not use the credit from these vouchers. So that's why this is a big thing now. You now buy the gift card and you can use it across the whole Apple ecosystem. So if someone gives you like, I think when we go to kids parties and that it, it seems to be like either a 25 buck or 50 buck iTunes card is what like the normal currency is. Now you could take that and actually put it towards, you know, a headset or a mouse or a new Apple TV or whatever you want to use as well. So if you've got like two Apple cards for your birthday and you've got a hundred bucks, you don't have to spend it on content. You can now spend it across anything. Interesting to see what that will do to the iTunes store, because remember, they make 30% on that. I um, don't know if I've just opened up a little door there for a discussion about the Epic uh, Australia court case, but uh, yeah. Mm. So <clears throat> that's that was the Apple Store announcement. Now, I've brought this slide up because I thought to show that I'm impartial and that technology is technology. <laughs> Um, and that you are a Windows user, I would hand yep. this one over to you. Thank you, Brett. Um, if, you, if you've been reading anything in the news and if you are targeted by ads or content, the latest Windows uh, evolution is about to hit us. Uh, depending who you talk to, The Verge loves it. ZDNet hates it. Um, a lot of people say it's trying to be Apple. Other people say it's the anti-Apple. Um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I know, right? Whether you like it or hate it, Windows, um, you know, is going through a pretty big, uh, more of a visual uh, and kind of a tactile uh, transformation. I think that Windows 10, you know, whether you like it or not, the, most people have found that it's the best uh, and most usable version of Windows. Uh, you know, they, they've got some of the tiles that some people use. Um, what they've done with, you know, voice search and, you know, integrating Cortana in has been pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I'm, I'm still very not happy with how they slow down your machine and make it unusable when they're trying to do updates. You know, come on, Microsoft, you don't need to do that. But um, Windows 11, rounded corners, nice little animations, you know, slides up and down. Not much change other than that. Like from a user experience perspective, it doesn't change much. I had a chance to play around with it over to Harvey Norman. I think the biggest news with Windows 11 is that a lot of um, people who own Windows machines won't be able to use it, uh, including I, people. I spoke like, about that, I think, last week or the yeah. week before. Like they've actually and, killed certain machines. They yeah, could handle so, it, right? They could. They the could, processor they, could handle it. So here's the thing. They could handle it. Um, you can go buy like a $69 Raspberry Pi device that can handle it. But these, you know, literally, if you bought a, a new uh, Microsoft Surface, that big one, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. five, studio. five eight thousand bucks studio, you know, SOL, bro. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of it's kind of a weird one. Um, but, you know. Now, oh, yeah, without being a hater, 
Okay. Yeah. It's, and I mean, I, I wear the fact that I'm a fanboy on my sleeve. Isn't that like a stupid move? No, one comment was it's the end of Apple. I mean, it's never going to happen. But isn't that like kind of going to alienate people that were already on the frustration level? You know, with I've got an old MacBook that I had to repurpose and give to Cade for school. It's a MacBook Air from 2015, I think it is. That's roughly the age. So that's it's a six-year-old machine. I wiped it out, and I've put the latest Big Sur operating system on. I checked first to make sure it could handle it. It says it can handle it. It's on, and it's running. You know, that is a six-year-old machine, and Apple still supports it and gives it the updates, you know, to the latest software. Um, you know, you. are people... Where's my coffee? Um, <laughs> so um, are people going to alienate or leave the Windows environment because of something like that? Because look, the cost point of view, it's the same now. A Windows machine, a Mac machine, same price. Top end. Uh, top top uh, end. Top end. I, yeah. Yeah. You, you can still, I mean, you, you can get a, 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 a quite a decent Windows machine for now like three or four hundred bucks um, okay so that's yeah that's, that's way better yeah that's gonna do it for you i i don't but will I think that machine last six years i mean do i have to talk about butterfly keyboards oh, oh <laughs> so, that's do i have the mute machine, control on this uh, <laughs> I, no, I don't you, have the mute <laughs> I'm, I've, I've, I've grown up. I've, I've matured a little bit. Like my, my feelings towards Apple have, have lessened because, you know, as you mentioned, we do have a, uh, an iOS device in, in the family now. And um, having done the research and played around and, and discovered, you know, the, the, the build quality, a Apple does do a fantastic job there. I, you know, I give it to them. And having had apples that lasted that long, you can rely on it. I think that, um, I hope that some of the the hardware producers will just do a better job. But I think from a from a software perspective, it's a matter of taste. Yeah, it really look, is. I agree with you. I mean, Windows is not going anywhere either. We know that. Um, I, it it is interesting. To see. I I had a look at it. I mean, obviously, I'm interested in these type of things. Just what do you think? Um, I found it very Apple esque. I, I won't lie. I definitely saw <laughs> that there was, the uh, yeah. It, but, but that's the attention to detail that Microsoft has always lacked. That's the thing. Yeah. Like they are actually starting to look at the UI and the UX a little bit more. You know. So um, yeah, let's see what happens with it. You know, it's 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 going to take six months, right? Everyone's going to get it. They're going to go through the bugs. They're going to have all the hiccups. And it depends on what Microsoft does at that point in time, how they fix those those situations, or just push them aside and you've got yourself another Windows, what was it, 8 or something, Windows 7 or 8 was horrific. Uh, their, their Windows 8 was terrible. Um, what was the one that was like Windows NT, I think, or something? I think XP was the absolute Yeah, XP, XP, XP was... <laughs> <laughs> well, matter of preference, I think. I mean, look, I think Windows 10 is great, I, and and I've gotten quite used to it. the The one thing that I can say, and I'm waiting to try out, is their sort of intuitive, smart, um, you know, updates. And I found on, um, you know, like on Android phones, Google's news is quite nice when it gives me the the, the content that they serve me. Um, I've, I've found also that the YouTube algorithm has been quite decent, like recently. Although they, another yeah. story from another time, but the number of ads on YouTube now, come on, guys. It's, yeah, no, but, it's terrible. But remember, I moaned on. about that over a year ago. Like I used to I say, I'm actually going to boycott but, products. It's really getting to that point. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Now, well, it's the next frontier. It's where they're hanging their hat. Um, let's see what happens. So, what have we got next? Ah, so I had this picture up last week on the show. <laughs> And last Sorry. week I had two rockets that appeared. This week I have to change my rockets. So I've used the same image, but I've kind of had to change it. So uh, yeah, sorry, Jeff. Um, a little bit of a hang down, small one for you, buddy. We wow. have to acknowledge the fact that it's 70 years old. This guy, the guy with the big rocket, is a legend. Okay. I mean, 
whether he really went to space, you know, there's the haters out there. Oh, it's not really space. It's the first layer and blah, blah, blah. And uh, there were some comments like he looked petrified. He didn't take a seat belt off. That, you know what, guys? He did it. You didn't. That's all I'm going to say. This is not like I love Richard Branson moment. This is a fact that this guy at seven years old was the first privateer to build and go to space on his own. Didn't need NASA. Yeah. And you've got to acknowledge that. I mean, I think that's 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 something. Um, yeah. So, yeah, well done, Sir Richard Branson. Um, oh, guess what? I got, thank you. I got uh, service as well. See, I've got almost home automation here. It's really good working from home and doing the show from home. Angela, if you're watching and listening, why did I never get coffee brought into the studio? Anyway. <laughs> Back to the, back to the, I'm going to get, I'm going to get flack for that one. Sorry, Angela, still love you. Uh, back up and sync. Now, whether you're a Windows user, whether you're a, um, a Apple user, or even Linux, right? Back up and sync using Chrome has, has been a very big part of a lot of people's lives. I use it. I've got a little icon on my Mac. Straight away, whatever I add into Google Documents. And I'm, I admit that I use Google Drive for my, um, for my backup, I don't use iCloud, and that's because I can then take it across any device. I'm not I'm not totally stuck into the the Apple ecosystem. The scary news is this is happening. So one October, if you haven't moved across to the new drive for desktop, uh, you're in trouble. You'll be locked out. So Google, which is yeah, Google's done some really weird things, but like over the last maybe two years, three years. Um, they've just become the Mark Zuckerberg for me. Like they're just doing some really weird shit. They're renaming things unnecessarily. They're putting services on and then taking them off and then bringing them back on again. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really not sure what's going on in Alphabet. You, you um, see how you got you got a. There's a bit of a parallel where you got you know two kind of new leaders that took over the business between. Um, Microsoft and Google, and you see that Microsoft is becoming a company that people, they really don't want to, but they're starting to really like it. And Google's kind of going in weird directions. Um, you know? Do you think it's just becoming like shareholder centric now? Like these guys are, um, you know, just it's bottom line, bottom line, bottom line. And then, you know, screw it. We'll kind of see what happens. I, I don't know. I just I don't know. like a move like this where everyone is now used to a system. It works. Like it's not broken. So why change it? Like what is the single purpose for changing this? Anyway, I'm going to stay with Google. Um, you picked up something quite interesting. Indeed. Oh, the the <laughs> the death of the best the best the death of the best laptop that there never was. Um, I like Look, I, 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 I now own a, a, uh, a Chromebook. Um, and I, I have to say, I, I do, I do see the, the value and understand, you know, why people would pick one up. Um, it, it is clunky, uh, but it does, uh, you know, serve a purpose. And like the, the first Android phone that back, back in the day, you and I spoke about, you know, the old Motorola, um, yeah. It, it's it's a similar story. And Google launched the first Pixel Book in October 2017. Said that this is going to be the future of computing. There will be no other <laughs> laptop ever needed. <laughs> Didn't quite, you know, uh, win that yeah. one. How, however, you know, education hands down. You know, they they, they broke into that space, and um, it's interesting that the Pixel Book Two is meant to be uh, coming out. It's been delayed and delayed. Um, but the original Pixel Book is now decommissioned. And, you know, un unlike Apple, Microsoft made a clear decision to say after a certain point in time, we will no longer, uh, you know, update the operating system and, and to an extent provide support. So, uh, we, again, a Google one, interesting to see where they go with this. Um, what's your take on it? So here's my thing. I was actually going to ask you a question first. So I'm going to ask the question, then I'll, I'll give you my thoughts to take on it. Um, I... I don't own a Chromebook. I've been wanting to get a Chromebook for ages, but I, I haven't been able to find a reason why I need a Chromebook. Now, there's obviously a difference between need and want, right? I mean, you know me when it comes to toys. I want everything. 
um, and I'd be happy to play with a Chromebook if one was sent across. I use Google for everything, and I use Chrome as my default browser. This is even on a Mac. So I would probably be a good candidate for a Chromebook, but I just haven't seen why I would give up a MacBook to go onto a Chromebook. Like That's the part that I've battled with thus far. In the early days, it was easy. There was no memory. Remember, everything was cloud-based. Now there is memory on the devices. You can get solid state drives and you can bring down your documents. You can work offline. So so that that concern is abated. That's not even a discussion anymore. But why did you, this was the question I was going to ask you. So it's hard for me to give you my take on it because I have I don't own one and I haven't owned one. But why did you get one? I mean, you've always had the the, the Microsoft Surface, the Pro, and you've you know, the stylus and that. What was your reasoning for getting a, a Chromebook? Or was it just curiosity? Uh, par similar to you, partially curiosity, partially saying, you know, what what is it about a Chromebook that you know drives all of this uh, interest and attraction? Um, Chromebooks are for people who just don't want the hassle of having to deal with any setup whatsoever. I mean, you turn it on; it's you're basically running in a in a Chrome browser, um, and everything yeah. that you know is is running and. Um, there's there are many steps less to having to set up um, what you do in, in Mac OS or uh, uh, Windows. Um, in addition to that, this the the device I got um, is a more expensive one, and when you go on the higher end, you're you're paying for both build quality and um, basically every, everything that's in there. So great speakers, it's a full media device. Um, and it's obviously connected into the Google ecosystem. Uh, could have probably gotten an equally powerful PC for less, spent a bit more and gotten a new Mac. Um, it was it was really, we needed a replacement computer and said, let's, let's go this route. Also, because it's um, Chrome-based, uh, I can have a, basically my browser and everything that's set up in there with Toby, the extension, pulling up yeah. all of my content. So it's almost like I don't have to do anything to actually just pick it up and start using it. So that's that was the, the reasoning. So what happens with things like um, Office, you know, Microsoft Office? So I use, I've used Google's Office, and it can do what it needs to do. But what happens with, like, if you've got a PowerPoint document that comes through, can you still use Office 365? on the Chromebook, or do you then have to convert it into whatever Google calls theirs, sheets or display no. or? So there's two ways, and this is this is something Google, Google did, it must have been about probably six to nine months ago. Um, you can edit PowerPoint in Google Slides with yep. minimal um, like sort of deterioration to the original file. Same thing with uh, Excel, uh, CSVs, and uh, Microsoft Documents. So that that that's there, but you cannot you can use Office three six five in the browser, um, so there's no there's no problem there. I just find Office three six five incredibly clunky compared to Google's Office suite. Well, that's what I'm worried about. So if I get given because I don't use Microsoft as you know, generally I don't. I mean, and I, but I equally don't like to use Apple's native um, um, apps either. So I like Chrome. You know, and I use Chrome Office and Docs and Sheets, but when someone sends me an email with a, a, a pretty involved Excel spreadsheet, I can open Excel on my Mac. I've got the Mac version of Excel, so I don't yeah. have to use Cloud or Office 365. And I have battled to use Google um, Sheets, you know, when it comes to trying to do things like that. Um, I see that our guest is in studio, so I just want to let you know, I do see you there. We'll be bringing you on, on air soon. Um, so, um, yeah, th that's the thing with, with a Chromebook. But I think I'll, ultimately I will get one just to have a play. And I said I do 90% of my work is inside Chrome anyway. Uh, you mentioned Toby. I mean, that was an app of the week years ago, and I live on Toby. In fact, every time I do a show, I send every open tab into Toby because it'd probably kill my machine if I try to stream as well. Um, Ari, I didn't realize the time. Uh, we saw yeah. a few other things that we were going to chat about. So I think what I'm probably going to do is, well, it's a good excuse uh, to get you back for another day. Um, 
before we go in and, and speak to our guest of the week, and while I'm changing the slides, uh, last time I chatted to you, not when you were my co-host, we had you on as a, as a guest. Um, tell me, what's going on in the land of uh, Kudo? Well, I think from the last time we spoke, uh, things have been very interesting. Um, you know, it, it really depends on what people do. And for those who missed that show, um, I work for a company called Kudo, where we uh, really bridge the gap of understanding. We bring people together um, by breaking the language barrier. You can speak uh, multiple languages in the same uh, web conferencing environment. I'll speak, let's say, English, and my counterparts speak Chinese. They'll hear me speaking Chinese. I'll hear English with up to 32 different languages at the same time. So. Very interesting. Um, in integration with Hopin, which is one of the largest uh, online conferencing and event platforms, um, we'll have a Microsoft Teams integration coming pretty soon. Uh, there's another integration with another very big web platform I can't mention yet, but that will be coming very soon. <laughs> Good. Um, I think prob probably the most interesting, exciting that, that we would have relevance around is this idea of having um, an AI uh, assistant. And so Kudo uses human interpreters, uh, people who are okay. trained in sim simultaneous interpretation. However, um, with the capabilities of, you know, natural language processing and content processing, you know, Google's uh, transformer and now perceiver, able to take audio, video, audio and video and pull out different pieces of information to supplement into a new learning model. Um, we're able to actually create a glossary for the interpreters. So when people are talking or when there's um, documents or videos or audio files provided beforehand, it automatically creates a glossary for them so that they can have that uh, kind of as a cheat sheet in front of them. And that's using AI and uh, some really cool next gen principles. I'd like to say in some areas, we're going to be the first in the world to have this sort of multilingual capability. Well, then I want to say time. this show needs to be one of the first in the world then to do the interview when you've got it and got the new, especially when the new platform comes on board. There's another excuse to get you back. Dude, I'm Always. going to bring our guest of the week into, uh, into studio. Um, if I can find the, my mouse, I keep losing my mouse today. Let's bring Boulder in. <laughs> there we go. Nice. <laughs> Boulder, on, I, I'm, a, I'm hoping I pronounce this correctly. Onerheim. Ona, yes. Onerheim? Yeah. That's very good. There we go. So, Boulder, thanks for joining the show. I'm going to <clears> take <throat> off that and let's see if we can get a much better. That's a better view for all of us, seeing we have nice. three of us on here. Um, <laughs> in fact, I want to play now. I want to see if I can do this. Oh, I can. Look at that. Whoa. We can even have, we can have, <laughs> so, we'll put the guest in the middle. How's that? Uh, Boulder, thanks for joining us today. Um, very exciting tech that you're working with. Um, I had the privilege of playing with it. And what I've actually done, in fact, I'm going to have to go back to screen sharing mode now that I've done this. Sorry. So I even went and did a slide for you and I went and did that. We are talking about a really interesting headset. Now, we're all sitting here wearing headsets at the moment. We're not talking about these types of headsets. Um, but basically, you're the founder and the CEO of a company called Plato Science. Right, so that's what the headsets look like. I'm going to go back to this view for now, which is better. Um, I have the headset here. Yeah, so and that's the, actually my headset, so I, I don't well, have one here because I sent you the one I That's why I remember you saying you sent it to me, so I'm going to show everyone. There it is. I can't put it on at the moment because I'm going to lose my connectivity, um, but that's the exciting part of what you're working on now with uh, the second version, the Play-Doh uh, game, which is on... Uh, Indigo, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, I think I've got a link here for you. I can bring that up in there in the script. There it is there. So it's an Indigo campaign. Boulder, before I tell you about my experiences with the headset, tell us what is Plato Science and, and what is it going to do for us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at Plato Science, we make uh, these type of headsets. They are based on a technology called TDCS. That stands for Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, which is actually sort of an old technology from a neuroscience perspective. So it's been around for about 20 years and it's been used uh, everything from, you know, uh, human performance to medical purposes. It's been used by the military, American, Canadian, some of the Scandinavian uh, militaries, 
uh, but always in sort of lab settings. So what my co-founder Morton and I wanted to do with Plato Science was to take this, to me, super fascinating technology out of the labs in the army and at the big universities and make it available for anyone to use it at home for their own good. So that's been the idea from the beginning. And our first product, Plato Work, the one that you have, uh, and have been playing around with is uh, more optimized towards knowledge work. So it's focused on how you can make people better at the different type of mindsets that you need for your everyday work if you're doing knowledge work. What I'm going to while, do while you're saying that is I'm going to bring up my phone, which very politely says hi to me. It's personalized. Um, and that's exactly what you were saying. They're the different levels that I had to play with, which we'll talk about just now on the app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we launched the first product about two years ago, and we've had a lot of uh, questions from our users about the version that works better together with these type of headphones, because our first product is designed to be uh, by itself and to be used, especially in group work context where you do not wear headphones. Which is so a new headset. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Play-Doh game is basically answering to that, and of course, uh, including all the small design tweaks and improvements that we've learned about for the last two years with the first version of the headset. Fantastic. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback from my experience with it, as yeah. and probably even the reason for reaching out. So I mean, for most of the people that watch the show know, I love gaming. Um, I have a 15 year old who eats, sleeps, dreams gaming. You know, if we can find a way to hyperlocate to skills even more without the cheats that you see on YouTube and TikTok, I have to actually yeah. digress that. I don't know if you've seen, um, you know, those toothpicks that you get, the, the flosses with the toothpicks, those disposable plastic things. There's yeah. a hack going around for Counter Strike that you can stick it on your screen. If you line it up with your gun using the long um, toothpick part, it then acts as an optic sight, so you could take a headshot within the frame of the flossing area. I mean, this really? is like <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> so, you know, anything that comes across in the gaming world, and that I've got like Google alerts that look for, and that's actually how I found um, Play Doh Science. Mm -hmm. So, the new headset that you're making, which is why I reached out to you, and I'm dying to try that under a headset, um, was the thing is that. I get distracted very easily, and, and so does my son, and so does most people in the stand age. In fact, I'm, I've got three screens. So if anyone that focuses on anything with regards to concentration or distraction, what I'm doing is probably terrible. In fact, I've got five screens. I've got a MacBook, a screen here. I've got my espresso display, which is a portable. I've got a 25-inch screen over here, and I've got a gaming phone, and I've got my iPhone. So. Oh, and I've got my iPad. So I've actually got six screens around me at any moment in time. It's, it's no wonder I can't get anything done because as mm -hmm. soon as one of them blinks, off I go. So I've, I've been lucky enough now to try. I've, I've obviously, as you said, I've got your, your unit, the, mm -hmm. the, the non-gaming one, which is fine because I don't have a headset on it if I'm not broadcasting or on a, on a call. And um, I had no expectations or I had no preconceived ideas as to what I was going to do. I just went through the oh. journey. It comes with these little pads that you put saline solution on, and I actually felt like I was going down the Dr. Frankenstein um, route oh, there because I've just finished watching. <laughs> I, I just finished watching uh, Penny Dreadful, so Frankenstein's mm. in there, and I put my pads on, and I selected the program. Now the app suggests mm. that you go with uh, reading first and just get used to that, which I did, and I picked up a document to read, and it was quite incredible. I could actually feel like electronic stimulation so it sits like here this is kind of where the the contact points were if i had to put the headset on that's where they were and i could feel this like i'm like smiling because i'm i can still remember the sensation i could feel this a little like like tingling but i noticed there was a control slide on the app that i could actually obviously increase or decrease me you know i'm a going all in kind of guy i obviously went straight to the right and i took it to the top i had to tap it off after a while but what was amazing is I selected a, a white paper that I've been wanting to read for a while and just an incredibly boring document. This is not a, this is not a bad thing on your technology, Balder. The document <laughs> was boring and I found every excuse under the sun not to read it, but I need to read it. It's something that I do actually have to read because there's something I need to deliver against it. And I'm very happy to say that on my first attempt with a headset, 
I read the document. And I think I even took in what I needed to take in from the document. So the question I asked myself is, is it because I was cognitively aware that I now had something on my head? You know, the placebo effect. So then I thought, well, let's go into focus mode. Because as I've just confessed to everyone, um, oh, look, a squirrel. You know, I, I don't know the meaning of the word focus. I'll find any excuse under the sun not to. So I selected that mode. Now, I don't know if I can do it and show the audience. I can. On the app, it actually shows you where you'll be stimulating and explains um, a little bit more information about what that's going to do. So that was in concentrate. But in learn, which was reading, you can see it was only focusing on different areas. And Aria, this is probably more for your benefit and obviously the audience benefit because you haven't seen because of lockdown. I couldn't show you the, the, the headset. And I have to say that I was able to concentrate for an extended period of time or at least more time or had less distraction than I would normally do. And what I did is I chose to use the headset in my normal day. So I didn't set up a task like I did. I had to read that white paper. This was the e – so I'm pointing here because on this screen is email. This is where I work. And this is like kind of where I get just distracted with music and Netflix and whatever else is going on on that screen. And I concentrated. I had to build a couple of pages on the SME more. Look how quickly you brought that into the discussion, the SME more. If you haven't got your store on the SME more.org.au, come and see. Um, I needed to build these pages. And I'd also been like kind of finding any reason not to do it because it's, it's just boring laborers work. And I did it. So, there's definitely not a placebo effect. I don't think this is a, um, what do they call it, like a snake oil science. Clearly, yeah. having some form of stimulant going into those different parts of the brain is doing something. Um, I have to ask you one question, and I, I know I'm doing all the talking. You're the guest of the week. There is a warning on there for not under 18s. Now, as I said at the beginning of the show, um, my son's 15, and as a gamer, he'd love to be able to take off 20 microseconds of focus, or at least, sorry, gain 20 seconds of micro, you know, 20 mm -hmm. microseconds of focus time. I mean, that's that's a headshot versus getting killed. Yeah. What would the reason be for that? Or what is it with the science? And that maybe it's how you explain the science to us and, and the limitations. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll start with the technology itself. So what it does, uh, TDCS, is it sends an electrical microcurrent from one electrode to the other. So depending on where you put the electrodes, the current will enter one part of the skull and be sort of exiting somewhere else. And what happens inside the brain when the current is passing through is that the uh, potential for natural electrical currents changes either to uh, a positive side or the negative side. So where the current enters the skull, it's easier for that region to, to do work, to perform natural work while where the current is uh, getting back out, it's harder for the brain to operate. So in that way, uh, depend on where you place the electrodes, you can actually sort of modulate the natural activity in the brain. So it's easier to uh, use the brain in certain predefined ways. And then what we have done is to uh, base the placement and the design of the headset on some of the biggest findings from neuroscience in terms of which regions of the brain are responsible in most people for which type of tasks. So it is, uh, to a certain extent, one size fits all and is based on the things that, in, uh, that are very similar in most people's brains. Okay. And since we're a private company, what we're trying to do is not to challenge the sort of the safety parameters of the technology because you know, there are more than 40,000 uh, samples in the literature. There's so much data out there. And in our own lab work, we do challenge like the conventions. But for our users, we prefer to stay within what is the standard in the industry. Keep it safe. And both for the, uh, so we'd say there's a 30 minute limit. So you can maximum use it 30 minutes per day. And we also have the 18 year limit. And both of those are not because there are any findings that point to it being dangerous or negative or increased chances for side effects, all these things. Uh, if you break those rules, it's more, uh, again, as a private company, we rather stay on the safe side. But 
you know, I've been using it for 90 minutes, uh, multiple days in my life. And there are hobbyists who's been doing this at home for 20 years, much more than 30 minutes. There are quite some studies now using children, especially for ADHD and ADD treatments. Yep. Where did they use um, sort of kids down to five years old, five year olds? So there isn't any, you know, indications that it is uh, negative. So it's more an overly safety precaution from our side. I, mean, I, I was going to say, Ari, you've got a you've got extended history and family with involved, and in, so that's why I thought it'd be great to have you on the show as well. Yeah. Um, so so been been looking at um, you know more, some of the EEG based. Uh, sets mm -hmm. uh, we we reviewed uh, the I think the the first and second emotive headsets that were out there mm -hmm. a few years ago. Um, the epoch, you know, got, yeah, the e epoch. You've got Muse, um, and and others that have sort of come out. Where where does Balder sit in terms of uh, what 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 you're providing to the user and um, sort of how how does it differentiate itself? Yeah, so. Uh, EEG headsets, I think Muse is probably the most sort of uh, advanced consumer version, which is easy for everyone to use, which is a meditation headset. Uh, these type of headsets, they uh, track the amount of activity and then it gives you feedback based on what it can detect that your brain is up to. And it's normally called neurofeedback, which is uh, based on an idea that if you know what your brain is up to, it's easier for you to regulate it. And I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, the idea of neuro um, feedback because, you know, if you try to learn how to meditate, if there's, if you have no feedback on how am I doing the right thing, then it's really hard to progress. While if you have feedback telling you you're doing it the right way, you're doing it the wrong way, then it is easier to improve faster. Um, what we do is actually supporting the learning process in the brain when you are improving. So we're not measuring what the brain is up to. We're, we're more or less, you know, turning the knobs and making it easier or harder for the brain to work in the way you want it. So we've been doing quite some work and a lot of labs have as well, uh, where you combine EEG neurofeedback with TDCS. So you look at the brain and sort of say, this brain needs more activity like this or more activity like that. And then you have training programs that you support using our technology to make it uh, easier for the brain to learn that type of behavior. Okay. Um, I, I want to go back to what you were saying earlier with ADHD. So, uh, look, I think everyone has ADHD. I really do. I mean, just <laughs> we all run off on our own little tangents all day long. Um, but that also is what intrigued me is, you know, my son has ADHD. Um, he does take Ritalin. We've noticed the difference in the morning. But ideally, we wouldn't want him to take it if he doesn't want to, you know, if he didn't need to take it. Yeah. When it does, when, when you get the findings that uh, you are looking for and, you know, once uh, you move more into mainstream and, you know, the Indigo campaign's finished and the second headset's out, specifically in the gaming industry, do you see this as a potential where, you know, as parents, we have that choice now where we could say, well, instead of putting our kids on a medication, and I'm not against medications, I just, I like choices. At the moment, there isn't a choice. You either take a Ritalin or one of the derivatives, or you don't, and you, you see what happens. Yeah, you know, could this be a, a product that going forward, we could have kids sitting in school, um, you know, wearing a headset, it wasn't uncomfortable to wear, so it's not like, but I'm just going to your 30 minutes and non under eight, you know, for now. Is that something that's in the roadmap? Is that where you see this product really coming into its form? Um, absolutely. So we just got our uh, class one medical approval in Europe in May, and we are doing studies right now on depression, anxiety, uh, long COVID, and uh, addiction treatments and ADD, ADHD is definitely in our pipeline and there are a lot of studies elsewhere as well uh, showing that. So I think this idea of using uh, technology, especially electrical uh, currents as an alternative or even a supplement to uh, chemical treatments is already, you know, have becoming quite common. 
and the neurofeedback uh, systems are already uh, reimbursed in most European countries. And I think using TDCS and, and similar electrical stimulation technologies for brain health, um, and maintenance, so you might have a little bit of chemical stimulants, but then you, you sort of use the electrical currents for maintenance, um, will become very, I think, mainstream, very common quite soon, and uh, we're definitely planning to be part of that. Okay, fantastic. So, I mean, I think there's definitely a case study there, you know, the nice thing with, with these current medical, current drugs that are available is that they do they throughput drugs you take them they used and yeah. they're gone um which is so nice about the headset you know first of all it's visual it does have that thing if i'm putting this on and it's tactile it means it's time to work and when i'm on a break i can take it off whereas if you have taken a chemical even when you're on a break it is still mm -hmm. in your system doing what it's yes. doing so it's like off away from keyboard back mm -hmm. on uh, look i'm saying away from keyboard I'm, I'm obviously not that optimistic <laughs> about going back to school. Yeah. Um, I see that uh, producers just put up. That's your normal website as well. I've got the Indiegogo here as well. Is that correct? PlatoScience.com. Obviously, yes. someone's, thank you. Someone's doing some work in the background. Um, <laughs> so, you know, as I said, I've only used it a handful of times. I haven't, I, you had to, I had to <laughs> pull it out of your hands to, to give it a go. But I definitely noticed a difference, and I, I mean, I'm dying to try the gaming version, um, mm -hmm. specifically that I, with a headset on when you're playing a game mode, you need yeah. this type of rig. You know, I can't not. Um, I need someone to tell me that someone's coming around the corner to kill me. <laughs> so <laughs> the headset's quite an important tool. Aria, yeah. any other questions from your side, Matt? Just a quick one: Can Play-Doh game be used by non-gamers, or yes. is it strictly gaming? No, absolutely. Uh, we already have a couple of uh, other disciplines like um, uh, target shooters, pilots, um, airplane pilots uh, who have ordered the headsets. And we've done quite some testing with you know, a wide range also virtual reality. It's quite effective for if you have a strong virtual reality uh, application. So if that's he PTSD does. treatment, <laughs> exactly, then uh, if if we know which part of the brain we want to be, you know, more and less engaged in that VR setup, then uh, Play-Doh game could easily be used in combination with most VR headsets. Nice, excellent. Very cool. Well, I'm very excited that uh, I stumbled across this. Um, yeah, I'm so pretty I. sure we will be talking again soon. I know you're coming to towards the end of the Indigo campaign, so I wish you lots of luck. Well, I think you've already hit the goal, but now it's a case of getting those stretch goals and uh, yeah and exactly yeah um three days when the, there we go and when yeah. the the next or the, when there is a version ready to to try of the game well i'm definitely going to put my head up i'm sure i will be happy to give it a world as well You're on the list um, especially under these big i mean I, I, yeah. i've got quite a big brimmed headset um so you know it'd be quite interesting to see how that does fit and look at the images i'll i think i can bring that up one last time um i mean that is quite a big change you know you haven't got yeah. a lot of materials there at all so this is the new one this is on indigo and uh well i think that's uh that would pretty much wrap it up for us i'm not even going to worry about q a or anything so that's been a it's been an amazing show it's actually been a long time since i've done a co-host remote with a guest if i'm not mistaken boulder you're in melbourne right so yes, I am. Melbourne, we're here. It's uh, look, technology is wonderful. If it wasn't for yeah. this, we'd all be very lonely. But thanks very much. Yeah. Um, I will be doing after the show. I'll put the links up as well into the post as well. So for the listeners and the viewers that watch us when we're still asleep, like our American, our American viewers and South African viewers, um, it's just a shout out to everyone in South Africa. The mess that's going on there at the moment. Please just fix your stuff. I'll say it that way. All right. Always good having you in the co-chair, buddy. I'm um, looking forward to it again. We've still got other topics that were on our list that we didn't discuss. Boulder, thank you again. And Thanks, um, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely have you on the show again. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Good luck for the last few days. Thanks a lot. Have a good cool. afternoon. You too. Cheers, Boulder. Bye. Bye. Well, what do you think, Aria? Amazing, huh? 
it's pretty cool. I, I lo I'd love to try it. I think that the difference between how he described, uh, you know, what, what we do with, with EEG and these headsets that are more of a kind of learning and response versus theirs, which is, it almost feels like a like superpower of cheating. Like if you're a gamer, you the, put that on. So, so you and I both know this, right? Because we both, I mean, I remember you saying to me, okay, I've got to do, a, you, you had a routine that you did when you needed to do a presentation. That was what you did. And then, you know, you did what you had to. We have all we all have these things that we have to do. I literally, it's like Superman. Put it on and uh, uh, you feel it straight away. Here's to your phone. And yeah, it's it's, it's almost like you, you guided. Um, 30 so, minutes though, 30 minutes. I mean, you got to be pretty, pretty selective of the 30 minutes you're going to use. Like, okay, I need to get that done. So I'm going to wear it 30 minutes. Or is it 30 minutes to like give you the tingle and then it lasts? No, the tingle after. starts from... from like from moment one but yeah. i think though on that note like i mean as he said obviously you've got disclaimers and everything you know people these are always recommendations he did admit he's used it longer um 30 minutes of uninterrupted focus is probably worth three hours anyway uh in in a normal day you know <clears throat> totally I, I, can, so, I can totally attest to that and also he mentioned it's it's about training your brain you know, and, and yeah. getting that open. So you, you would think that over time, your brain would learn and begin working in, in those new, you know, I'd like to see if you could actually just turn off the stimulation, but by virtue of the fact that this means work, you know, like mm. it's the same as working from home. I'm still disciplined that I put on clothes. I'm not sitting in my underwear. I actually have clothes on, you know, it's like put clothes on means going to work. Otherwise, how do you differentiate your home life and your work life? So, Put the headset on, work. Even if it's not actually active, it's yeah. just that's your your sign, dude. We got to we got to ring off. Um, it's like five to the hour. It's, it's quite totally. a long show. Just um, time flies, always, buddy. Yeah, really good having you here. Um, I've got things that I still need to finish on my list, which we'll have to come back to. But uh, keep well, keep safe, and uh, as always, thanks for coming on. So. Uh, until next time, uh, keep your screens clean and your knobs shiny.